Slavery is not one thing, but slavery is many things. And when we know somebody uh, is a slave, we know something very, very important about that man and woman, but we don't know everything. Their lives are very, very different depending upon the kind of work they do and the kind of circumstances they live in. Slaves worked as laborers on small farms, servants in urban households, as factory workers, riverboat men carpenters, blacksmiths, prostitutes, and at many other occupations. More than half of all slaves lived on plantations or agricultural estates with 20 or more slaves on them. People who worked in the field were due in the field 30 minutes before sunrise. Women did every job that men did except jobs that required animals. So if, if a field had to be plowed with an ox, that was a man's job. If the ditches had to be cleaned, if the canals had to be cleaned, if trees were cut down, if wood was sawn, all of these jobs were also women's jobs. Children's jobs on this plantation included going into a 98-acre field and picking the bugs off of all of the crops. Women and men who worked in the house typically thought of themselves as having a better job, in part because they were associated with the owner's family. They heard things people who worked in the fields didn't hear. So their exposure was different, but God knows their work cycle was not. They worked seven days a week instead of six days a week, as, as field hands did. Every night, the servant comes in and gets my boots and cleans them. Every morning, he comes in before I'm up, brings me water to wash, brushes my clothes, and builds a fire when one is necessary. At night, when I am down to prayers, the chambermaid comes in and turns down the bed clothes and puts things in order for me to go to bed. In fine, everything is done for me. I have nothing to do, and I find it really convenient to be waited upon. Slavery gave whites control over the lives of blacks, control over their physical bodies, and to some extent over their minds. But as in any human relationship, there was always an element of negotiation involved. I think that the whip and overt force is successful only up to a point. Owners are trying to get from the slaves as much, as they, much work as they can, uh, for as long a period as possible, and slaves are trying to get, uh, as, as you know, the human instinct to to work as little as possible for as much as they can get in the terms of reward. For example, allowing slaves a certain amount of time after they completed their work to plant a small area of land for themselves. At minimum, it would be the area around their cottage. The lands were not used only for economic exploitation, but they're also used as special areas of rest and recuperation, and may have been used in some areas to bury family members. We get a sense of uh, a relationship between uh, slaves and land, which was very similar to the relationship between Africans and land. Within the confines of slavery, blacks created a world of their own where whites could not enter. Slave culture consisted of religion, folk tales, music, and dance. It was a shared experience that gave pleasure, hope, and meaning to difficult lives. And it was a subtle form of defiance. My old missus promised me shua la day. When she died, she set me free shua la day. She lived so long, her head get bald shua la day. She give up the idea of dying at all shua la day. Slavery is always two great stories. One of those is the story of imposition and violence, hideous and obscene violence which has rained upon people who are subordinate 
and don't have much means to protect themselves. But the other part of uh, slavery's uh, story is, of course, that slaves themselves refuse to give in to the violence, refuse to be dehumanized by dehumanizing treatment. Uh, and on very narrow ground, almost uh, from the beginning, uh, begin to create uh, a uh, way of life which sustains them in meaningful ways. They created families, they created community, they created folk culture, they created African-American Christianity in the quarters. They resisted the enslavement uh, that white people thought was natural to them. They knew that slavery was unjust, and they fought to keep from internalizing that perspective of themselves. You just tuck and jam yourself on that there tar baby without waiting for any invite, says Brother Fox, says he. And there you is, and there you stay, cause I'm gonna barbecue you this day, shoo, says Brother Fox, says he. Slaves' stories were intended to teach as well as to simply entertain, and they taught lessons particularly to children. I don't care what you do with me, Brer Fox, says Brer Rabbit, says he. So you don't fling me in that there prophet, says he. Children had to learn to be slaves, and every parent wants to protect children, their children, from the harshness of this world. And slave parents had a particularly difficult task ahead of them. How do you survive the institution of slavery? Because Bill Fox want to hurt Bill Rabbit bad as he can, so he cut him by the behind legs and slung him right in the middle of that, that bra patch. You had to be shrewd. You had to be clever. You had to outthink the master because the master was always stronger. Bread and bone in a prop patch, Bill Fox, says Bill Rabbit, says he. Bread and bone in a prop patch. And with that, he skip out this as lively as a cricket in the embers. Slave culture gave slaves a life beyond the drudgery of work and a means of resisting the dehumanization of slavery. Whippings and beatings were common methods of punishing slaves for everything from theft to insolence. The only terror greater than whipping for a slave was to be sold away from his home and loved ones. Other than the land that a planter owned, the most valuable property he owned would have been a member of the slave community. Collateral on loans. Uh, if you didn't want a loan, you just needed money, you simply sold somebody. The African-American family doing slavery was as important as family is to any people, whether enslaved or free. Sometimes we attribute characteristics to um, individuals who may be enslaved that are subhuman or less than human characteristics that we attribute to everybody else within every society. Uh, the family is probably the most important institution, and it would have been within a slave community here. <laughs>